Hey guys, SuperSonic123 aka John here. Welcome to episode number 26 of the Milan Career Mode. In today's episode, we got two games for you guys as we start on Juventus at home, and then we travel away to face the league leaders Udinese uh, next week as well. As uh, I was by the league here, I was considering not doing this uh, Juventus game live. As you see, uh, Juventus is awfully down in 11th right now. Of course, if they win, they'll go four points uh, off of the top three, uh, the three Champions League places. But they're struggling right now in the league. They've lost, or they've won five, drawn six, and lost three. Um, and as you, by our league position, we're currently in second. Again, a game in hand of most of the teams around us. If we win, we'll go top of the league ahead of Udinese. Ahead of again that game against Udinese, which is on, which is the second game in today's episode. So we'll get into the Juventus game then, see if we can get a good result out of it, and come in Milan. So this is the team we're going with this game, guys. As you see, the default starting eleven, more or less, because everybody is fit. Actually, it is default starting 11 exactly, no uh, more or less about it. As for the Juventus team, we'll see what kind of lineup they've put out. Um, so, let's see here, no Gianluigi Buffon. I think he's retired, actually. And in goals, they have, a, they have Nesho. They also have a guy called Bui in the centre in the back three, along with Barzali and Chiellini. Um, and as she, it's more or less the same team apart from that. So, this will be a tough game, even with Juventus struggling this season. So, let's see if we can get a good result out of it. Alexandro, Marchisio, finds Zaybala. The cross, Marquisio's there, cleared off the line by De Chile and eventually gathered by Donnarumma. That was a major chance for Juventus there. Luckily, we come out of it still nil nil. And there's half time as well. It's um, Milan nil, Juventus nil at half time. Not many clear cup opportunities for either side, to be honest. Aside from that goal line clearance from De Chile, really the only one I can think of. Pretty even so far, in my opinion. And we go into the break nil nil. So hopefully, we can break the outlook in the second half. Come on, Milan. Finds Belotti, excellent, he's through on goal. Belotti against Neto, Neto saves brilliantly. Pjanic gets a clear on these far, Suso back towards Milik. Milik with the header, it's over the bar. Chance is gone. That was a great opportunity for us to take the lead here. I don't know how he didn't, that was two excellent opportunities there for Milan. As you see, Marquisio picks up a button for Juventus. For, for this uh, foul here on Romagnoli, but I, what I want to see is the chance. I don't think they're going to get the chance to do that. No, that's ridiculous, they don't show the chance again. Oh, but Neto's giving it short, and Keely's lost it. It's Belotti. Neto saves. Is that going to drop in? It hits the bar. It comes back out to Belotti. Comes clear. Cartabia turns. Pjanic tackles. Another amazing opportunity that we haven't been able to seize. But we could still ha get it here. Cartabia plays it backwards to Pellegrini. Suzo. Milik. Header and saved by Neto. Oh, what a massive wave of opportunities there for Milan. The head, the head of the best one there from Milik rises above Chiellini. Powerful header saved by Neto excellently. Suzo with the corner. Belotti punched away by Neto. Romagnoli's going to get that on the volley. Romagnoli with an excellent effort saved by Neto. And it's another corner. Suzo tries to float the box. And Tep! And Tep with the header heads it down towards goal. It ends up wide of the post in the end. Juventus escape, get that, and, and they get a goal kick out of it as well. Cartabia again. Antonelli in the box. Intep! Header again from Intep. Why did it post this time? We've utterly outclassed Juventus in the second half. How on earth are we not in front at this stage? Intep wins it back, goes to shoot. Cartabia saved by Nacho again. Is Nacho going to end up with the, This is man of the match. There's less than 15 minutes remaining. It's still 0 0. An absolutely world-class performance in the second half. But Nesho has been world-class to match. So many saves from the Juventus goalkeeper. And now Juventus might have a chance here. It's Juan Cuadrado. What's the man on Chelsea going to do here? Comes to Higuain. Excellent block by Regani on the line. Stops that from going in. It would have been a cruel, cruel way to lose this game if Higuain had scored in the last minute. But the former Juventus man Regani got back. Blocks it on the line. And it's out for a corner. Piano to take the corner. Collected by David Pino. And there's full time as well. It finishes Milan nil, Juventus nil. I'm going to say it. We should have won that game. We deserve to win that game. And we should have won that game. It's as simple as that, really. As well as Juventus might have done in defensively and in the first half as well. The second half, we were just we just outclassed Juventus. No doubt about it. The only chance Juventus had was that late one with Higuain there. We had a umpteen chances to, to find the back of the net, but because of bad luck, poor finishing, 
Under world-class performance from Nasho, the game finishes Milan nil, Juventus nil. Just look at the, the match stats there. It's absolutely unbelievable. Juventus with one shot in the whole game. He had 11 and 8 on target as well. We just were so much better than Milan. I swear to God, it's it's just inconceivable that Juventus haven't been annihilated in this game. The only chance you've had. We'll ha so that's a disappointment. We'll have to move on. And hopefully we can get a result against the league leaders, Udinese. So again, uh, an average result. Or, well, a result I'm rather content with in that game against Ud or, uh, Juventus where we drew 0-0. But now for the second game in, in today's episode, we take on Udinese away from home in the Serie A uh, as they are the league leaders right now. And we have the chance to go above them, top of the league, with a victory uh, against the uh, against the side from Udin. Uh, I was going to do this game live, but then my game froze and I lost my progress when I recorded it live. So I record, so I had to play the game all over again and I had to... I did, I'm, I'm doing this from post-com anyway. Um... So you travel to face the league leaders Udinese with the hope of uh, getting results out of it. But uh, Juventus will have, will have the first chance, or Udinese will have the first chance here. Ryder strolling past our defence. He's got a man over to his left. He doesn't need him. Ryder goes on, shoots and scores as well in off the post to make it Udinese 1, Milan nil inside 10 minutes as Ryder, what a name, uh, just breezes past the entirety of our team and puts it and slots it past Anaroma. In off the inside of the post, into the back of the net to make it Udinese one Milan nil. We need to have a work cut out for us uh, uh, for the remaining remainder of the game, as it would be Udinese one Milan nil at half time. In the second half, then as we look for an equaliser here, Kartebi picks up the ball here, slides towards Belotti as Belotti shoots and Belotti scores as well into the bottom court to make it Udinese one Milan one. As a former Torino man, Belotti gets his I think that's his tenth goal in the Serie A this season as. Uh, Excellent uh, vision there from Cartabia to find Belotti as he slots it past Carnes, the Udinese goalkeeper, to make it to make it one one as we get back on level terms against the league leaders and hopefully we could uh, maybe snatch a winner to put us top of the league for the first time in the se season. And just to confirm, that is Belotti uh, is his ninth goal in the Serie A this season, not his tenth yet. And uh, following that, then Belotti would, would pick up the ball once again. And uh, look for Suso on the right-hand side. He slides the ball through towards Suso, who keeps it in just about. Crossing with the left foot in towards Milik. It's headed wide, though, and it's out for a corner off the Udinese man. And then Belotti would find David Pino here, who would shoot. He would hit the post. He would come back to Bonaventura. And Bonaventura, from two yards, that would stab in to make Udinese 1. Milan 2 at 10 minutes remaining. We took the lead and almost... And we still are... I can't vocalise what I'm trying to think. Um, what I'm trying to think, what I'm trying to say, as uh, Bonaventura toe pokes the ball into the back of the net to give us the advantage, put us on the front foot here in the final ten minutes against the league leaders, and uh, then following that, uh, Bonaventura would slide the ball down towards Antonelli, our left back, who will cross the ball in. Malik rises above the defenders, heads it into the back of the net with a bullet of a header, and as R.K. Dushmilik makes it Udinese one, Milan three. And surely seals the three points for the Rossoneri, ins ensuring that we would go top of the table following this victory. As you see, Antonelli with a brilliant weighted cross, a fantastic leap from Arcadius Milik above the defence, and powers the header into the far corner past Carni Carnesia, sorry. He does seal the three points for Milan. As the game does, in fact, finish Udinese 1 Milan 3, and that being also Milik's ninth goal in the Serie A this season. As you see here by the stats, it does finish 3 1. Following that, then we get an email saying that three of our players could be lost at the end of the season. Uh, Gabriel, one of them, we offer him a new contract, as uh, all these could go on pre-contracts, uh, for as in they could go for free at the end of the season. We offer a new one to him, and also to Antonelli, our left-back. We don't offer one to Jose Souza. He's getting on a bit. I wouldn't mind letting him go for free. Well, remember when we let Andrea Polly left go for free last year, again, uh, to Southampton. And we might do the same with Jose Souza. Uh, there should be some player training here for the three men that we are currently training. Uh, Kiriakou, Giannakos and Mariani in our youth squad. And uh, so as you see here, Antonelli accepts his contract extension, but Gabriel says he wants to move on at the end of his contract. So if that's the case, you might have to look for a new backup goalie. And we have some more player training here following that. As um, as uh, Kiriakou, he goes up to 75, now a goal player. Maybe he should be our new backup goalkeeper. That's an idea. I haven't thought about that till now. And also we get uh, an, 
an email that Luca Esposito wants to be promoted to the senior squad. 56 overall, 87 to 93 potential. Looks like a quality attacker. So we offer him a contract um, and see what he says to that as well. And also Andrea Ferrari, what a fantastic name that is. Andrea Ferrari wants a new contract. 59 overall, six or 78 to 92 potential as well. So we offer him a contract and see what he says as well. Luca Esposito accepts his contract and this is what he's like. As you've as already seen, 17 years old, Mr. Esposito. As for skill moves, 5-star weak foot, 4-star skills. That is pretty tasty. 5 foot 10 can play on the left-hand side. Cameron officer offers an international right offer. We reject that. And Andrea Ferrari accepts his contract. 15 overall centre mid. This is how he's looking. Uh, technically gifted player, but 2-star skills. That makes sense. So that brings to a close this episode of the Milan Carrimo, guys. As we currently sit top of the table. In the next episode, we will face... Um, Carpi as well as Fiorentina and Brescia in the Coppa Italia. So we'll see you for that very soon.